Good people YouTube, I'm the Watch Idiot, and I am so excited for this one because it's a watch that I've wanted to get ever since it got released, and it's the SRPK17, the 55th anniversary re-edition of the first ever Seiko 5 sports watch. But now I have it and time has passed, so I wanted to see what it was like as a watch now that the initial hype and excitement from the release has died down. And while it's a super, super, super cool watch, the bracelet has a pretty huge problem that renders it kind of useless actually. So in this video, I'm gonna get into the details of this watch, including the dimensions, how it wears on the wrist, dial case, very problematic bracelet, and then the just awesome solution to it. So yeah, let's get into it. So the dimensions first as always, and it is just fantastic in terms of size for me in almost every single way. The case width is 39.1 millimeters, although the bezel is 39.6 millimeters, and then it's got a 12.7 millimeter thickness and a 43.1 millimeter lug to lug, which is short, but it works well here just because it's a lugless case design. And then finally, it's got a 20 millimeter lug width, which is great for strap changing and bracelet swapping, which isn't usually done, but stay tuned. So yeah, as far as I'm concerned, it's spot on because in the Seiko 5 space, there aren't many, if any, 39 millimeter watches that have a rotatable bezel and a 20 millimeter lug width. I wish they would just release the 5K KX as the 40 millimeter SRP D or K, one of the two. And yeah, that would just be, poof, that would just be insane. On the wrist, it wears just as you'd expect a Seiko of this size to wear, meaning that it's super comfortable and it looks thinner on the wrist because of the way the case back kind of sinks into the wrist. For comparison, here it is next to the Slim Willard and it looks smaller mainly because of the lug to lug, but also because of the white minute track adding to the visual break, which makes the dial look a bit smaller than the Slim Willard dial. And for a little bit more context, here it is next to an SSK GMT, which will give you an idea of how it compares to an SKX. I won't get into the original bracelet here, but on this beads of rice bracelet, it feels absolutely amazing to the point I'm happy that the OEM bracelet didn't work. By the way, I try out more bracelets uh, throughout the video uh, as you'll see, but just know that all of the bracelets and stuff is linked in the description and in also in the pinned comment. None of this is sponsored. I bought all these straps and bracelets by myself. So the dial is the big star here and beyond the size of the watch, the dial is what really pulled me in here because it's just so different from the usual Seiko divers out there. So yeah, this is yet another palette cleanser for me alongside the Mojin 39mm Spirit Zulu Time that I reviewed uh, two weeks ago. And it's a remake of the OG Seiko 5 sports watch and you can tell that it's from that late 60s, 70s era because of the contrasty bold silvery white minute track and the geometric indices and then the red and blue pops of color. And honestly, I wouldn't have any of the way. I love the way it looks. When I see this watch and dial on my wrist, it legit feels like I bought myself a new old stock watch, which for me is just perfect because I made a video about this. I don't really want to deal with the potential vintage pains of something just not working, but I also do enjoy the look and feel of vintage, vintage watches. So yeah, this is kind of the best of both worlds here. The dial itself is a pretty standard matte black dial, nothing special here, but we do have a painted silvery minute track that adds a bit of a, you know, punch of visual interest. Then we've got the three-dimensional indices here, and while they look like they're just plain white loom, they actually have metal surrounds that you can see uh, in a, just a few angles. It's not very visible. Next up, I'm really liking the text on the dial because it's got the old-school Seiko 5 logo, and it's got sports in an old-school font on top of that, and sports is just something that you wouldn't see in modern-day watches, so it's kind of it's kind of neat to see that in that font on this watch. And it's even cooler because the second hand is red, so those two little bursts of different colors bring back the fun of the old days. Going on with the handset, the hour and minute hands are simple stick hands, but they surprisingly have two facets which reflect light in different ways depending on the angle, which is prospects level stuff here. So uh, yeah, on a Seiko 5 for $400, good job. And now finally, the coolest thing about this dial for me is that day date window. I am always ready for a bilingual day wheel, but that frame 
is what gets me. It doesn't just have a metal surround, but rather a multifaceted geometric frame that reminds me of Grand Seiko's of that era and how architectural their dials, indices, and cases were. I'm so happy with this because if you're gonna do a date window, just fully commit to it. And that is exactly what Seiko did over here and made the window its own dial element in the end. Next up, the case and bezel, and I'm a big fan because we've got a barrel-y, tonneau-y, cushion-y case with hooded lugs, which makes for a super short lug-to-lug -lug of 43 millimeters, but it looks okay and proportionate because of the hooded lug design, or lugless case design. The rest of the case is very Seiko with the swooping case sides, much like the Slim Willard and many other Seikos. And then on the top side of the case, it has a very nice radial brush to it. Oh, and thankfully we have drilled lugs because it makes life easy for any sort of uh, bracelet swaps or strap swaps. But the good thing is that despite the hooded lugs, it can still fit in quite a lot of different things. So the only limits would be maybe a sort of thick-ish NATO strap, but at that point you can just use curved spring bars for that and it will be pretty much okay. And then there's the crown, which is pure vintage Seiko. And I really like that they included this detail. However, as cool as it looks, it is a bit irritating to wind it because you can't really use two fingers because of how inset it is and you can't really get too much purchase with your fingers. So you just kind of have to use one finger. Now onto the bezel and it's a bi-directional smooth clickless bezel with a coin edge grip and an aluminum insert. And this is spot on for this watch again because I'm a fan of bi-directional bezels in general for daily life. And since it's just a sliding friction fit bezel, you'll never have a misaligned bezel. Uh, it'll be as perfect as you want it to be. And I really like the fact that the bezel insert has a fully graduated minute mark that looks different to all the dive bezels that I have. Also, it's kind of surprising that this one has a covered loom pip at the 12 because most 5KXs don't even have loom at it. So yet another elevated detail for this limited edition. Oh, and I I almost forgot the case back is super cool because it's designed like vintage Seikos of old and believe it or not all 15,555 watches are individually numbered which is kind of insane so this is where things get a bit interesting for me because I was really, really, really excited about the bracelet because it just, once again, looks so cool and so different compared to everything else that's out there and it complemented the vintage late 60s, 70s vibe of the watch head. And in person, it felt solid, uh, if not a bit cuff-like, which I'm okay with it overall, I suppose. But my God, it was so hard getting the links out. And then I saw that the inner edges on some of the links were rough, which led to the bracelet being more inflexible and the links that I took out were barely flexible at all. So yeah, I mean, I'm used to having subjective problems with Sego bracelets, but this one just doesn't work. So yeah, if you have this watch up, yeah, let me know if your bracelet has the same issue. But this was definitely a blessing in disguise because I now have it on an even better bracelet and that's this straight end link beads of rice that I got from Amazon. It's by Strap Habit. I bought it myself for like $45 and uh, yeah, once again, not sponsored at all, but it just feels super comfy and super solid. But then I got the Strap Code straight end asteroid bracelet and man it just looks absolutely perfect and looks even more OEM at this point because it's a basically a more geometric version of the beads of rice bracelet and to me it works really really well because of all these geometric dial elements and the faceted hands and all that good stuff it's just ah man so good like it it's, it's gonna stay on this bracelet forever basically oh and finally here it is on a mesh bracelet if you're curious it's good but you know i would want some taper to it i think a strap code does some tapered mesh bracelets if you're curious about that but um yeah once again everything's in the description so yeah there you have it let me know what you think about the srpk 17 limited edition re-edition uh, down in the comments and if you enjoy the video go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe button to let YouTube know that this is a good video So uh, yeah until the next video good day